So most of you have been asking about push notifications and I made a video where I talked about uh, kind of what all goes into making push notifications. So I've been working on an application. It's an add-on for Yelp Camp. Uh, so this would be like version 11 with my code added onto it. And basically it's a really simplified version of notifications. They're in-app notifications. So similar to like when you're at udemy.com and you ask a question and I reply to it, you see a notification, you can click on it and you can view that post. So right now, again, it's really simple. It only allows a user to follow another user or any number of users. And then if they create a post, you get a notification about the post. So the way I'm doing it is with middleware. It's not using web push, which is push notifications, which is something entirely different. It's for online and offline use. It's part of progressive web apps. And it's a lot more complicated than what we're talking about here, even though don't get me wrong, this app that I just built is pretty complicated. I'm gonna go through it and share the source code with you all in case you just wanna get right into it and start kind of picking it apart and trying to use it in your application. So, like I said, it uses middleware and the problem with that is that it doesn't scale. Like, once you start getting thousands, millions of users, a large amount of users, then it's gonna take up a lot of resources. So. To fix that, of course, you would use another process with a background job, stuff that I haven't implemented yet. But for a simple, just kind of like showing to your employer or just getting some skills under your belt type application, this has a lot of extra stuff that you haven't done yet. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I sign up and I sign up as, let's say, Holly, and then when Holly gets signed up, she creates a new campground. And so we'll paste the image in there and we'll say new campground and then this is a test and so here's a campground created by holly and you'll you'll notice up in the top right corner holly has no notifications right so i'll log out and i will sign up as jim and so jim signs up and he immediately sees holly's post so he clicks on it and it says this is submitted by holly so he clicks on holly's name this is her super elaborate profile and he goes and clicks the follow Holly link. So now he has successfully followed Holly. Okay, so we log out and we log back in as Holly. Of course, the password has to be correct. Holly creates another campground, same image. So this is another test. Hello world, submit. So there's the campground, great. So we log back in and now what I say his name was Jim. Jim logs in and looky there, he's got a notification. Now, assuming that Jim was on his computer and Holly was on her computer and she uploaded this, all that Jim would have to do to see that notification is go to any of the pages. So if he's here and he clicks on add a new campground, boom, it's gonna tell him, hey, you have a notification. Or if he goes to the home page, or if he goes to any of the pages, it's going to show that he has a notification. So basically every time a request gets sent by Jim for anything, the middleware goes in there and says, do I have any new notifications? If I do, let's go ahead and update this UI right here. So he logged in and in doing so, it updated the UI. And so he clicks on notifications one and you see a link for view past notifications and then Holly created a new campground. So let's go ahead and click on Holly created a new campground. It takes me to the campground that Holly created and now notifications are zero. And so when I click on that, it doesn't show any notifications, but I can view all past notifications, and then there's that one. And the same process goes if Holly follows Jim, or if Holly creates another one, then Jim gets another notification, or if Holly created five campgrounds, then Jim would get five notifications, and you can mark them all off as completed by clicking each one of them from here, or you can view them all even after they've been marked as completed inside of slash notifications. So that is what the extent of this application does thus far. It seems pretty simple. It is a ton of code. So let's go ahead and dive into the code a little bit and just see what we're talking about. So over in my code editor, Sublime Text, we have, let's see here. Let's start in the routes. So in the index routes, if I scroll down, I have a user profile route. And so immediately you're seeing new syntax. If you've been taking my courses like Code Node, then you're already aware of this syntax, or if you've taken some other courses outside of Colt's Web Developer Bootcamp, I think you may even teach it in his advanced bootcamp, I'm not sure. But we have async, 
await being used inside of here. We have a try catch block being used with async await to handle the error. And so this is a profile route where it's slash users and then the user ID. And so we find the user by their ID and we populate all the followers for that user. And then we render the profile and we pass in the user. This is also new syntax. Normally it would say user, user, but with newer versions of JavaScript, we can just put user if both of the variable and the value are the same. Okay, so that's that for loading the profile. That's where you go when you want to follow someone. And then when you click on that link, this gets invoked, this route gets met, and basically it says, hey, is this person logged in? Do an async function, find the user in question that is wanting to be followed, push the user that's logged in who's trying to follow that user into that users.followers array, and then save that user. And then it flashes success, redirects you, that's when you see the uh, flash message says, hey, you successfully followed so-and-so. And of course, if you have any errors, we handle those. So then we have notifications. This is where you go to view all past notifications. So same thing, it's an async function. Make sure that you're logged in, try catch block. And basically we find the user by the user's ID. We're using rec.user.id and that's the user that's logged in currently. We populate notifications and we sort them descending. So newest first. And then we pass those into the notifications index, which is where the page loads on slash notifications. All right, so that's where you see all those past notifications and you can click them and you can go see each one of those. All right, so then how do we handle a notification? So we handle a notification whenever we click on the notifications drop down, and it shows us any number of notifications. If we click on one of those, what it does is it finds that notification, which has some information inside of it. And inside of it, there is a dot is read property, which is a Boolean. It starts out as false, meaning it has not been read. And so we change it to true. So now that it's read, it's not going to show up as a number. So it's, if we have one and we click it, now it's read, it's true, and it shows up as zero. And it's also not going to be just showing up in the drop down at all. It's going to be showing in the path notifications, which is up here, forward slash notifications, but it's not going to be shown in that UI inside of the nav bar any longer. So then we redirect to forward slash campgrounds and we pull the campground ID for that notification out of the notification. And then so that redirects us to the campground while simultaneously marking that notification as red. And of course we handle the errors for that as well. So in the models for campground, you can see, uh, sorry, not for campground, where am I? For user, there we go. We have notifications, which is an array, and it's an array of object IDs, and it references the notification model, that's new. And then we have followers, no new model for this, but it's an array of object IDs, and we're referencing other user other user objects, so other users. So for instance, when Jim followed Holly, now Holly has a follower, Jim, his ID is inside of her dot followers array. Okay, so notification, here's this model, it has the username, this way we can say Holly created a new post, or Holly created a new campground, and then the campground ID for where we want to redirect to. And you can make this more complicated, it could have comments and campgrounds, anything you want, right? So right now we're just doing campgrounds. And then there's the is read boolean, which is defaulted to false, meaning it hasn't been read yet, but then when you click on it from the notification dropdown, then it marks it as true, making it read. Okay, so how does that translate into the UI? How does it keep updating for every request? So in app.js, down here in our app.use middleware, where normally we just have res.locals.currentuser, res.locals.errandsuccess, we have a new if statement. So the if statement is if rec.user, meaning if anyone is logged in via passport and passport creates that rec.user object then let's do a quick try catch here notice i made this an async function so we can use async await and we'll use async await to find the user who's logged in why can't we use rec.user because it doesn't have all the information we need about the user we need to populate the notifications that means we need every single notification object from the notifications collection for that specific user inside of the user object here. So user.notifications will give us an array of all of those objects. So this syntax here, it's a little bit different, but basically what it's saying is populate by notifications, but only the ones that are not read yet. So is read is false. We don't care about the ones that have been read, only get those if we go into the slash notifications, which is handled by a different route. Okay, so we execute that, it gives us the user, and now we pass in a local variable dot notifications equal to the user that we found dot notifications and I just threw a dot reverse in here so that it would be descending. 
There's probably a better, more mongoose programmatic way to do that, but I was having difficulty with it in tandem with the syntax that I found right here, and I didn't want to delve into it too much, so I just threw a dot reverse on there. So now we have those notifications if users logged in, in which case it gets rendered on every single page, right? Res.locals is going to give you a local variable for every single page. If you don't know about local variables, then check out my local variables video. Um, I'll link to it. Okay, so now that we have res.locals.notifications, how do we render that into the UI? So in views, partials, header.ejs, down here, where we have the, let me zoom out because this is a lot of markup. So where we have the is the user available or if no current user, give them the login or the register links. And then of course, if the user is logged in, so else we give them a drop down with signed in as then the username and then the logout button. Well, simultaneously above those, I created a drop down and the drop down is for notifications, which has a span with class of badge that's bootstrap, gives us a little number with circle around it. And we pass in notifications.length. Notifications is an array. If there are no notifications, then you just get a zero. And if you want to, you can put a little if statement in there to where it just doesn't appear at all. But in this case, I just have it zero and it can go up from there. And then what we do is I have a list item. So it's the very first drop down menu item. And it says view past notifications. And that takes you to slash notifications. So that's all notifications that are uh, read or not read. And then below that, we do a notifications out for each function notification. Then we iterate over notifications, which by the way, if you remember from the middleware are the ones that have not been read yet. And so we pass in the link to the notification ID and that or slash notifications and then we use the notification ID and then we pass in the username created a new campground. We know it's campground. Again, you can expand on this and make it a comment if you want. And then that could be a variable as well, depending on whether or not it's a campground or a comment. So that's it. Uh, when they click on this, it takes them back to this route right here, which finds the notification and marks it as red and then redirects you to the campground using the campground ID that's on that notification. Okay, so it's a lot of code. Um, some of it is new, like I said, using async await. I think I use let in here instead of var. So there are some things that you might wanna look up as you're looking through this. I'll link to the code in the description. So just remember, I built this on top of Colt's app. So like I use single quotes in my JavaScript. Colt uses double quotes. So you may see some double quotes. Uh, for instance, I use right here, I have a template literal. So I'm using the back ticks. Also, that's from a newer version of JavaScript. So like here, we have double quotes and that should be single quotes. It, it's not that it should be one or the other, but if you're using one, they should all be the same across the board. But that's what you get when you're combining my code and the way that I write code with Colt's code. So nothing wrong with that. Just know it might be a little bit messy and need some cleaning up. But in terms of functionality, it works. So let's talk about scalability. I already touched on this before. Again, if you have a ton of users, then, oh, I missed one part. It's a very important part. Sorry, let's step back for a second. Routes, campgrounds. When you create a new campground, this is an async function. And what we do is we create all, we get all the information from the form for the campground. And then we create the new campground. And then we find the user who's currently logged in and we populate the followers. So this is the person that's creating the campground. And now we create a new notification. And now we iterate using a for of loop, which is new in the newer versions of JavaScript, over all the followers for the logged in user. So the person that's currently logged in, creating a campground, as they're creating it, you iterate over all their followers and create a new notification with that campground's ID and the username of the person who's logged in. And then you push that into all the followers follow or all the followers notifications arrays. So that's what's happening here. And so imagine you have a post with 9 billion followers. Okay, maybe not 9 billion, but let's just say a thousand. Computers are really fast. They could probably handle that, but a large number that's gonna slow things down. And the problem is this process, this node process is handling all of the HTTP requests, right? Well, if all of a sudden it gets held up and it needs to iterate over all the followers for this post that's really popular, then it's going to slow down the entire website and the user experience. It's going to be horrible. So how do you fix that? Well, you use background jobs. So basically you delegate that process, that task to an entirely different node process that handles it in the background. And then when it's done, it updates. And now everyone everywhere on their next uh, request to the website is going to get an updated notification. So for now, I'm doing it in the route. This is not efficient. So I just want to point that out. 
and it needs to be put into a background job. So this application is not exactly scalable. It'll work for smaller applications without a lot of uh, bandwidth needed on the server or a lot of load on the server anyway. But it's just kind of an introduction to how you can create in-app notifications. There's a lot more that can be done. You can use sockets to make it real time. And then like I say, you can use background jobs to make it to where a lot of the extra load for trying to find all of the followers and create notifications for each one of them gets handled in the background and not on that main process that is handling all of the HTTP requests. Okay, so hopefully you've been able to follow along. Uh, check out the link in the description below. Let me know what you think. It is open source. Feel free to fork it, clone it, make a pull request, things like that. And um, here pretty soon, hopefully I'll have an updated version with more features like the ones I just talked about with Socket.io and background jobs. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.